What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 50 of Park to Prem here with Tower Lord Town. What an occasion for episode 50. What a moment for episode 50. It is the Vanorama National League playoff final. We are taking on Chester at Wembley in the biggest game of the series so far without a doubt. The National League is an incredibly difficult division to get out of. That is just a fact of life. It's a league that is fiercely competitive. Teams get stuck in this league for a very long time and well we find ourselves one game away from potentially making it out at the first time of asking and what a season it has been. We have scored 102 goals this season that is a crazy goal scoring tally. We've conceded 57, which by comparison to Chester, who we played today, ain't quite as good as their 39 conceded. But a plus 45 goal difference in 46 games is very, very impressive. And only eight defeats as well. I, I don't feel like that can be understated. We've had an exceptional season to get to 92 points. And uh, well, we look at this final game as an opportunity to cap off what has been an incredible season. Of course, last time out, we beat Swindon in the semi-final. If we look at the team for today's game, just the one change. Unfortunately, Stephen Wern uh, picked up a slight injury in training. As a result, you can see here, uh, he is not fully fit to play. That means that Shuttleworth is going to play out on the right. Additionally, I am going to have Kumwender on the bench. I want to bring him on if I can. If I need a goal, maybe he's the player to turn to. He loves big games, and this is the biggest of the big games, so why not give him a run out? We might be light on a central midfielder, but Callum Jones is not ready for selection after his dislocated shoulder, so if we need a centre mid option, we could bring on Wern, or alternatively, we could bring on Wern and move Shuttleworth to centre mid. In an ideal world, of course, Jake Forster Kayski and uh, Warrington in the centre of the midfield, they're not going to get injured, and they're going to be essential players for us in this game. But yes, this is the team we're going to go with. We're going to stick with Younger at left centre-back. He put in a pretty good performance in the game against Swindon. We kept a clean sheet. That was a rarity. He doesn't love big matches. That does scare me a little bit in these kind of games. But we're at a level where, uh, realistically, you can't really have a team full of players that love big matches. You're going to have players who don't love them. Um, we'll have to hope that those that do love them, such as Leighton Stewart... Have a good game today. Does Mampala love big matches? It's not something that I look at that often. We have a few players that love it. If Stuart can score a hat-trick, then we'll, we'll consider the fact he loves it. But yes, this is the team we're going to go with. In terms of Chester, we take on today. They finished 7th in the league. We played them twice in the league. Of course, we drew twice against them. Um, if we look at the little stats pack here, you can see here the results um, that we've had over the course of the year. Here's a comparison of our league history. We've caught up with them quite quickly, although, I mean, you can see here, they got three promotions back to back to back all the way to play in the Vanarama National League in 2013. So we're trying to do one better than they've ever done here. Um, you can see here in terms of how we've got on in games against different quality of teams. We, um, how do I feel about it? We win a lot against the top half teams. They draw a lot against the top half teams. Um yeah, it, it's it's going to be interesting for certain. Um, you can see here, Leighton Stewart, top goal scorer, their key player, I'm going to judge by the fact his face is plastered all, all over my screen, is Zahore. He is looking like their key striker. He's got 16 goals and he is tired. Hmm, uh, are they all tired? Let's have a look, shall we? Their team is looking a little ragged. That makes me feel good going into today's game. Um, they've not got a particularly big first team either. We've been pretty well rested as well because we played Swindon on the weekend. They played their game against Hartlepool on a Tuesday night. So, yeah, we perhaps have that going in our favour. And, well, I've stalled for long enough. Let's get into this. Let's hope for an entertaining game. Let's hope for a win. Let's hope that episode 50 today, the end of season 6 is going to mark our entry into the Football League. And of course, following on from that game, we're going to go forward. We're going to have a look at the usual end of season stuff, award winners, a little bit of a, I guess, retrospective look back on the season. And well, the tone of the second half of this video is going to change quite dramatically depending on how this game goes here. So let's get into this. Mampala, gold drought, immediately being questioned. Um, we'll have to we'll have to see how we get on here. Right, let's get into this. I'm nervous. I'm scared. We're playing at Blooming Wembley as well, which is very exciting. Our first ever appearance at Wembley. It's going to be a big pitch. It's going to be a big game. 
Let's see how we get on, shall we? And well, early on, they've had significantly more of the ball in the first seven minutes, although we have it here, and Shuttleworth, playing out on the right, is going to give it away. Excellent. Crankshaw bringing it forward for them. First goal in this game feels like it's going to be crucial. I'm expecting a very, very tight, hard-fought game. Um, obviously, the, the two times we've met them already, we've drawn against them. Also worth noting that for this game, I am starting with the more direct passing instruction that we switched to last game already on us. So Jorge's effort is blocked. I think that was younger. It was younger. What a block that is. But yes, just look at instructions. I'm starting with the more direct passing. I felt like that worked quite well against Swindon. That might also, however, be why we're giving away the ball quite so much. Let's go slightly less direct. See if that helps out with possession. I think I had a rush of blood to the head when I decided, let's just go with the thing that changed the game last time out. You, the, football is not a one-size-fits-all. Anyway, half an hour gone, not too many opportunities, and we're here in their half with the throw-in. We are going all the way back to Gannon, though, who boots it forward and could get caught out of position, although DKM to Norris. He can hit them from here. He should cross it from here. Might get a second chance to put the ball in. Gives it to DKM, who dinks it to Shuttleworth, who heads it in! The Bolton boy with the header, and he's had an awful time with injuries. He had an amazing start to the season with us. DKM, he's just doing his thing out on the left. What a revelation DKM has been this year. He is my player of the season. He has assisted so much. Leighton Stewart a close second. But what a time to dink out a cross like that. Shuttleworth's header superb. Only his fifth of the season. We take the lead in this game. And that's going to give us a little bit of confidence. I'm, I'm going to claim credit for switching off direct passing. Although, nine minutes later, we're on the back foot. Chance here at the edge of our... 18-yard box. Glendon probably going to hit it here. He does. Oh, my word. That was not far wide. We will claim that Smolio had it covered, I think. Players are looking motivated. They're looking fired up. And so they should be. At half time, we are 1-0 up. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. Which might seem odd, but I don't want complacency to slip in. I don't want us to relax. I want us to stay hungry. I want us to keep pressing hard. And, well, we've got a set piece here. Five minutes later. Shuttleworth in DKM. Almost a reversal of the first goal. Shuttleworth with the ball in DKM's header just wide of the mark. Chester are creating chances here. Although DKM, he's been at the centre of everything. He wins the ball here and launches it forward to Mampala, who skips past his man. Where is Stewart? He's got to be there in the middle. Um, man, 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 this, that's why he's not scored since February, I think. That's an awful effort by Mampala. I don't have words to explain nor try and describe what he's tried there. Another highlight starting here at the edge of our box, though. Another throw in deep in our territory. They hit it from range and just wide of the mark again. This game has not had a whole lot of clear-cut chances or half chances. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm bringing in Kumwenda. I'm bringing in Kumwenda to play poacher. Mampala's been poor. He's not scored in a while. We've given him 90, uh, 60 minutes and we've just had... Was, did he save? Sorry, did he save that? Smoyo has just bailed us out. I could not tell from this angle, but he tipped it over, apparently. Ball's going to be whipped in. We need to deal with it. Kumwenda's header kind of gets it half away, but only as far as Glendon, and we block the ball from going in. 25 minutes left here. Let's get shouty-shouty. Both teams showing positive body language. Forster Kayski's not had a good game. Neither has Warrington. I don't have a centre mid on the bench, though, to change things there. I'm going to keep faith with Stewart. And you know what? I'm just going to keep faith with the team that's out there. I'm not going to change things here. We're ahead in this game. We've not conceded yet. Why change things? Ten minutes left. Another goal here would really help relax my nerves, please, game. Gannon gives it away straight away. Now it's with Tate for them. Sliding tackle missed. Norris, though, superb tackle. Gets dispossessed by Halliday. It's going to be a straight foot race, which James Norris wins. Don't go across your own 18-yard line. That's a heart-in-mouth moment there. Norris, oh my gosh, he's kung fu kicked it to Stewart, who dribbles and accelerates and anticipates. Options in the middle, tries to go alone. Falls straight into the keeper's lap, and he will gratefully hold on to this. Five minutes left. Kumwenda. On off the bench. Involved here. Shuttleworth. Warrington Stewart. Okay. He, he's skied a great opportunity for us there. A very good opportunity. Chester here. Now on the front foot. Two minutes left. They whip it in. Zahore scores. What is happening? 
Oh no. Oh no. It's 1 1 with two minutes left. I'm going to change our wing backs to support, not attack. Oh no. We could go to extra time here. There's a minute and a half left of added time. Chester on the front foot. Surely not. DKM. What can you do, my friend? Dinks it forward. Stewart's there. On his own. Skips past his man. Through on goal. Can he finish it? Yes, he can. Leighton Stewart with possibly the last kick of the game. Two minutes into added time. Scores. DKM with the assist. Stewart with the goal. And I mean, look at this. This is peak Stewart. Great dribbling, great acceleration. Skips past his man. You think, can he score the one-on-one? -on -one? Can he hold his nerve? Of course he blooming can. He loves the big game. He slots it into the bottom corner. That is going to be that. We are promoted to the Football League. A crazy last five minutes to this game. Oh boy, right. Town or town, League 2. It's not a title win. But we will, we will lift that trophy aloft with our iconic green suit on. I mean, let's go through that. Can I click on the players here to go through them all? I can't. I could, I could try and guess who everyone is, but I don't know how politically correct that would end up being. But what a performance that is by every player on the pitch. We didn't make a ton of changes. Kumwenda couldn't have the dream appearance that you hoped he might have. Smoyo, by the way, a 7.1 rating, which in football manager terms is exceptional for a goalkeeper. He made some huge stops in the game. Leighton Stewart, with that heroic last-minute goal, man of the match. Kumwenda harshly gets a 6.9 rating despite getting two assists. That feels unjust, doesn't it? But what a win. 2-1. What What is Alexander going to set the budgets to be? That's, that's what I'm wondering now. So we win in the National League playoff final. How much is he going to give us to spend? Boom. Initial wage budget of £60,000 a week and a transfer budget of £0. I mean, our current wages is less than 40000 so I guess I can rejig some of that. Okay, yeah, I can. We, we can shuffle around some money. Okay, that's fine. I was a little bit concerned by the zero transfer budget, but we have been promoted to League 2. I mean, Alexander Mukin has got to love that, right? He's got to... I'm loving it. Delighted at an unexpected promotion. Shuttleworth is happy that the promise has been kept and we get promoted. The board are loving the vision being achieved. Wow. What a season. And the player of the season for me, I said it was DKM. Leighton Stewart may have just snatched it away there in the final with that goal because... Let's be honest, when you see your striker going through on goal like that, you usually just expect them to screw it up. And he actually held his nerve to tuck it into the bottom corner. What a season he has had. Incredible stuff. And I need to go and have a lay down and just calm down after that. What a crazy, crazy game. They had the better of the chances in the second half. They created some really good clear-cut opportunities. I did think when Zahore scored in the 89th minute, that we were going to extra time. It was going to go the distance, but oh, come with the man, come with the hour. DKM as well, two assists. Let's, let's not forget about this chap either. He turned up big when we needed him to as well, and, well, they now get to look forward to playing in League 2 next year. Anyway, guys, I did notice that in the inbox items, I haven't got anything about the end of season awards and stuff. So what we'll do is we'll go forward. We'll have a little recap of the year, a look forward as well. Um, but yeah, what a game. If you have enjoyed this so far, drop a like on it. And uh, well, future Jack, take it away. Okay, guys, so we are now here for the end of season segment to this episode. A look back at the season just gone and a bit of a roundup, I suppose, of everything. And it feels like quite significant and quite nice in many ways that episode 50 marks the end of our non-league adventure at least assuming we don't get relegated which given how things have gone so far I kind of hope won't be the case of course I have done lower league saves like this in England before genuinely speaking the two hardest divisions to get out of are the national league and also the championship uh you know they, they are the two divisions which for me are ones that I can get unstuck at. I've, I've done a lot of saves like this in Football Manager, so I kind of know what I'm doing, and I do feel like this transition now from the National League to League Two, I don't want to say it's one of the easier ones, but I feel like it's one of the ones where, because so few teams go down and so few teams come up, the actual 
best teams in the National League tend to be better than the worst teams in League 2 year on year. So I'm hoping that that will work, of course, in our benefit. But we'll look back at the end of next season and work out whether or not I was right to say what I've just said. But that's my experience talking. Let me let me know if you do saves like this. Do you agree? Disagree? I'd be curious to know. Anyway, we broke the record for most goals in a National League season with 105 goals. That is a really, really good little achievement. I'm not sure if that is of all time or if that's kind of pre the start date of the save game i'm going to assume by the fact it's barnet that it's perhaps uh i guess it could be it could have been while they were still in the league i'm not sure if that's the real life record we beat it if it's just the in-game one well it's the best performance in six years in the league a record high in the division as well finishing third not entirely surprising. This team hadn't been above the ninth tier before we took over. In, in terms of players inducted into the overall best 11, you can see here a few players have been included. Five of them, in fact. Callum Jones at centre mid has been included with an average rating of 7.12. 21 goals in 86 games for a regular centre mid is a really, really impressive return. Um, kind of crazy to think now that he's played 74 games for us across two seasons. Really has been a key part of our team. Mampala, DKM, James Norris and a Dunstan. The other players to join the proud history. And you can see the overall team now here. Ryan Ferguson, Sonny Best. In fact, I think everyone in this Best eleven is still at the club. Which is kind of funny. We can get, we can get a quick where are they now um, and have a look at this. Where are they now? Um... That they're all still at the club. No one's left the club. We, we keep them in the museum, the under-23s, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, you can see here the overall... Oh, was this the previous overall best 11? I'm very confused. Or is this before it updated? The likes of Kit Elliott and Midgley may have been removed from the history books with the new players being added. I'm not sure. Either way, end of season rewards. Rewards? Awards. Where is DKM in the fans' player of the year? The fans don't know what they're talking about. Leighton Stewart, though, 38% of the vote. Warrington surprises me to get 31%, but when he was fit, he was very, very important to how he played. Really built upon his good season last year. Whilst he didn't quite match the assists and goals, his actual contribution when he was fit was superb. But unfortunately, this year did suffer 11 weeks of kind of downtime with injuries, which makes me even more surprised that he got as high as he did in the fans' vote. Mampala also getting 20%. He got goal of the season. Um, let's have a look at it, shall we, against Halifax. Of course, Mampala, I feel like we're going to remember this year for the fact that he hasn't scored since the start of February. He has gone on a long drought, and whilst he has contributed to goals, he's not really scored a great deal. This was a good goal. I'm surprised that's goal of the year, but... It, it was a nice run and finish, I suppose. Smoyo won signing of the year. I'm glad he appears somewhere on the rewards and awards list because he deserves to. I deserve a reward for signing him. He deserves an award for playing for us. You can see here his contract has been extended due to the promotion contract extension clause being triggered in his contract. I guess that's triggered for a few players. I didn't realise that that had triggered. Let's have a look. Ex extension... Is, did I not get a news item about it? Why Why is it typed like that? Contract. Du, 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 du. Interesting. I haven't got a news item for you yet, but um, he was a player who, of course, we had a contract extension after promotion clause in his contract. Did anyone else have them? Oh, DKM had one, of course. So he's now on a, a five-year deal from this point here, which is great. Brenia Diaz has had a contract extension trigger. I don't think Gannon has. Either way, um, great to see Small Yo's contract get extended. That's going to make it even more difficult for a team to try and steal him away from us. Also, Warrington getting Young Player of the Year. Age 22, in his third year at the club. Feel, feels a little generous to give it to him. Anyway, our end of season review you can see here. We were expected to be in the running for a playoff place, but performed even better by securing promotion. It was a superb season. We're going to pretend the cup competitions didn't happen because they were awful. Average attendance, 458. That is... Not great. We will hope that with more teams coming to visit us in League 2, more big teams is what I'm trying to say, there'll be more fans coming to see us, and so the average attendance will continue to go up. Of course, Towlaw is a town where about 2,500 people live. There's not a massive pool of fans that we can potentially attract. It'll be interesting to see, as we continue to climb up through the leagues, whether or not that's a factor. You know, Will we ever get more fans coming, or is this the limit? 
I'm not entirely sure what to expect. You can see here the, the Town or Town, where are they now for our first ever season, which is kind of interesting. Players like Luke Ferguson, who has retired from football after being released, I guess. Mark Kennedy, retired from football. Michaela, retired. Did anyone survive? Russell Carter, they've, they've all gone, everyone. I guess I was clicking through all the players who have retired. There's a few players still around. Jordan Jowers plays for glass Houston. that sounds like a fake place to me um you can see here ben holmes is at new mills and tyrell palmer never forget he, he, he's still at concert so it's what you get for leaving us you could have been part of this adventure you chose to leave to go to our local rivals Callum roberts playing for wickham wanderers Callum o'neill turns out for witten and butty for workington did anyone end up at a bigger team i don't think they did really which is interesting. I, I didn't know if someone might end up climbing up. Anyway, Club Vision. This is going to have been refreshed because we got the early promotion. So let's have a look at things here. Sign and sell players for a profit. We're doing that anyway, so that's fine. Although, the fact that that's a part of our five-year plan makes me feel like our chairman isn't a millionaire and we've been lied to. Uh, aim for next year is to avoid a relegation battle and the year after that is still just to get a top-half finish. Um, obviously, we've been given quite a hefty wage rise, which is good, and we don't have too many players with players with um, contract uh, clauses whereby when we get promoted, they get wage rises. So that's going to work in our favour. I know lots of players naturally ask for that. I make a habit of removing them um, intentionally. We can negotiate things here. What would I like to negotiate? I don't, I don't like this new thing here, but I can't remove it. So sign and sell players for a profit. I think we should be reaching the playoffs of the EFL League 2 in two years. So I'm, I'm going to up things a little. Up the ante, perhaps. But, of course, in League 2, uh, the top seven teams all have a shot at promotion. Three teams go up automatically, and then there's a playoff spot as well. Um, so League 2, again, for that reason, is a little easier to get out of. In terms of squad dynamics, things looking very, very good. Mampala, Warrington and Kumwenda considered team leaders in the dressing room. Hard to disagree with that. In terms of plan for next year, I'm going to say mid-table, I think. With new faces, we can get mid-table. But I think that should be a bit, is a bit too ambitious. Okay, perhaps I'm asking too much. Let's lower demands. Okay, a few people decide we're lacking ambition. Let's hope that it's a good overall reaction. And, uh, I mean, there's lots of green there, but the morale has gone less green. That That's not great, is it? Anyway, a few different award stuff coming through here. Doherty named player of the season in the National League. Top goal scorer went to Stewart with 32 goals. The next highest had 22 goals, so he did quite well. We're on the short list of the manager of the year, but that's not announced for a year. So I'll try and remember to include that at the start of next episode. I will forget, so feel free to ask me in the comments if we managed it. Um, obviously, that was the where are they now item that we just requested. One thing that did dawn on me just after the Perth final was the fact I didn't do my usual players to be released shortlist. So I'm going to need to do that in my own time. It's going to be a pretty busy summer, I imagine. Obviously, the fact that the wage budget's gone up significantly is quite nice. We're going to have about... Oh, a, a very good chunk of money to like invest where we want. We can rejig a little bit around. As I said, I don't think we're going to have players with wages rising. I think really I would like to sign four or five kind of big ticket players. I would love to get in. Uh, I don't know. I feel like left back it with Norris is fine. Right back with a Dunstan is kind of fine. Um, Gannon disappointed me this year. He did. There's no getting around it. He's improved a little bit as of late, but he was... Uh, I don't want to say he was bad, but he didn't quite live up to his billing. He's still got time to improve. He's still young. I feel like a new centre-back is needed. Obviously, we have Oli Younger. We did make a few new additions at centre-back, like Deshaun Bernard, and also like Chris Hamilton, who came in as a kind of emergency backup um, in January. Hasn't really had to play for as much. Um, I kind of signed this guy, for example, with the anticipation that we weren't going to be in League 2, but that we needed the squad depth. Now that we know we are going to be up a division, it kind of maybe ne means that we need to move on a player or two come the summer. Of course, the squad that we have here isn't that dissimilar to what we had at the start of the year and even at the end of the season uh, before this one. We didn't sign a load of players because we went professional and ended up having to spend a large chunk of our wage budget just offering pro deals out to everyone, but... I mean, the good news is that we do have a core of a very, very good squad here. There's players like Alex Lindsay and Ryan Bart who, I don't know, I, 
I thought they were going to be better than they were. I mean, apparently, Lindsay could have potential to be a League One player and has a current ability to be a National League player. But when we gave him opportunities, he didn't play well. Neither did Ryan Barr. The players who they played a role in the team, you know, the season uh, before this one. But going into next year, can I can I trust them to do it again? Probably not. I feel like I don't know. Uh, it's tricky. I I'm still not decided if I want to keep playing the four four two going into League 2, because on the one hand it has worked, we've got promoted with it, on the other hand, there's definitely games where we suffer with the two-man midfield, and I do wonder if switching to something a little more conventional like a 4-2-3-1 could, could be a little smarter, the issue being right now that we don't have the attacking midfielders, you know, to necessarily play that setup, and additionally, it would be a bit of a juggling act, I feel like, to keep all of our strikers happy. I mean, in terms of goal scorers, we already talked about it, but Stuart and Mampala led the way. DKM, 14 goals and 20 assists is an absolutely crazy return. Jones getting nine go goals, uh, Wern with eight, and Missador with seven, although he went on a very, very good start to the year and then completely dropped off a cliff to the point where I don't think he scored. He scored one goal in the last 20 games. That really tells you a little bit about how his year went out and his average rating was so high to begin with and it's completely fallen off. Kamwenda, I don't want to say he found his limit this year, but he probably found his limit this year. He's a leading player for National League North and South sides. Going into League 2, it's going to be tricky. I don't really want to lose him. I want to keep hold of him. But at the same time, it's a case of he, he might have to go in the under-23 museum alongside such names as Romario Vieira, Voltzman, uh, Andre um, Brooks. If you're wondering, Sydney Best, how's he doing? He's loving it. He's getting paid £400 a week to chill in the under-23s where we don't play competitive games. That might change, though, with a promotion now to the Football League. I believe we will now get entered into a reserve league. So he'll get some football there. And, of course, Ryan Ferguson, the postman, Still doing his thing. I actually gave him a new contract recently. So he's here for another three years, which is nice. I'm a generous guy. What can I say? But all in all, it's been an interesting year. I feel like we've overachieved in a way. But then when you look at how many goals we scored, we were never not going to be in and amongst the top teams just with a goal scoring record like we had. Small yo for me the breakout talent. This guy improved so much through the year, like an incredible, incredible amount. Um, I mean, obviously you can look at this graph here, but it's kind of pointless. But if you actually just look at his general attribute growth during his time here, let's just set it to regular goalkeeper. You can just see how much certain things have improved, particularly his aerial reach this season and the season before. They've, they've gone through the roof and hopefully that's going to continue to change. Um, if we just look at his last year of growth, you can see here... Slight improvement to his physical ability and then slight improvements across the board. But, you know, lots of plus ones. His jumping reach went up by two. That's always a nervous thing with a young goalkeeper that has low jumping reach. It's kind of a question of, are they going to grow? Are they going to get a bit better with their jumping? And Smolio certainly has. At 19 years old, he's attracting interest from a lot of very, very big teams. And that makes me even more keen to keep hold of him because it means he's probably very, very good. You can see here his contract expires in 2032 because of his optional contract extension, or rather his contract extension after promotion triggering. Interestingly enough, in FM20, I noticed this before, but I wasn't sure if it was a bug. Now it seems like it's a feature. If you have an optional contract extension and a contract extension after promotion, I think if one of them triggers, it cancels the other one. There used to be a situation where you could lock down a player for an 11-year deal. In this case here with Small Yo, he's tied down for the next seven years. So seven more years of Small. Make of that what you will. I'm very excited by it. In terms of average ratings, top performer Leighton Stewart, Warrington not far behind. DK came up there as well. It's pretty impressive that Mampala, despite his goal drought, is so high on this list. You can see his average rating in his last 20 games has been a 6.92. Um, the way this graph works as well, by the way, is this is the whole team's last 20 games. So if a player only has half this chart filled, they only played about half the last 20 games the club's played. In Mampala's place here, he's played 19 of the last 20 games and got three goals and one assist. That's a little bit concerning going up a division, but at least in the eyes of our staff, obviously National League quality player and has the potential to be a leading League 2 player in the future. Um, so I'm going to keep some faith with him. I, I want to believe it was just a little bit of a blip and 18 goals for the season 
is a crazy, crazy return, and it makes you realise just how good he was for the first half of the year that he ended up with as high a kind of performance as he did. Uh, Forster, Forster Kayski made a massive impact for us. I know it doesn't really show. I feel like set average ratings for centre mids are never particularly flattering, but he played nine games for us after he joined us in March time. And he was a key part of our team. We had some injuries at centre mid, obviously. If we hadn't signed him, I don't think we would have won in the playoffs because we would have been without Callum Jones and we wouldn't have had that alternative kind of box-to-box -box midfielder, a slightly less creative midfielder, but someone who can get up and down the pitch. You can see the two of them compared alongside each other here. I actually feel like they're quite complementary to each other. But yeah, for me, Forster Kayski was a really smart move at the time. I didn't really know how big of an impact he was going to have. I just kind of eyed him up as a very good player who I'm aware of in real life. He used to have some good potential. Surprised that he got released by a championship club and no one else picked him up. And obviously, getting into March time, having been out the game since the previous summer was willing to take the step down, and I'd like to think he isn't going to regret his decision now. Of course, going into the league season this year, the media prediction for us originally was first. It then quite quickly settled down to fifth, which I think is a little more realistic. The board won to the playoffs, obviously we achieved that, and then some. Just looking at the media kind of dream 11 for the whole league, Smolio at this point now is our only player in this kind of media dream 11. At the start of the year, we had three or four players, so it gives you an idea of perhaps how much teams strengthened by bringing in loan signings. Um, or perhaps how wrong we were judged to begin with when we were tipped to be one of the best teams in the league, which I do feel like was a little bit generous way back at the beginning of the season. I want to believe that's down to the media and pundits perhaps getting a little carried away with just how much money we had at our disposal. But on the whole, a very good year. In terms of immediate signings, we don't need a goalkeeper. I think a centre-back, maybe a right midfielder. DKM out on the left, I think, has earned his spot in the team for next year. Between Shuttleworth and Wern, we have kind of two quite good backup-ish players, but I don't know if I'd trust either of them to step up. I feel like Shuttleworth is better than Wern. Very consistent. Only 19 years old with some potential, but given the injury worries he had this year and has had throughout his very short career, it does make me wonder if he's actually going to be a reliable long-term solution especially playing out on the right-hand side. You know, he just doesn't have great acceleration or pace. And I feel like the further up the footballing pyramid we go, the, the more that pace becomes important. And so his general lack of it could come back to bite us in the ass. Just looking at finances, obviously overall balance isn't particularly great. Hopefully we get some investment from the chairman over the summer. We're going to need it. Um, the wage budget that we have set for the new year is very, very good. Um, we're going to be having a bit of fun with that, I imagine, in the, the market. Um, as I said, I don't really know what to sign yet. I feel like I need to go back and kind of evaluate the team. The general way that I like to do things at the end of the year, and I don't really talk about this, but it's probably something I should talk about a little bit, is I would essentially try and construct a team of players who I'm like, yes, in the starting 11 for next year, definitely. And if you were like, if you held a gun to my head right now and said, Jack, who's definitely in the starting 11 next year? These are the players who I'm certain will be in and amongst you know, the leading candidates to be in the starting eleven. The challenge, I guess, is to maybe sign a few players to fit around them. I feel like defensively, um, we could probably rely on the likes of Gannon. But then, just given his average rating this year, it does leave me a little bit concerned. But, I don't know. I feel like I need to persist with him. He's only 20. Great consistency. Current ability is a National League player with the potential to be a League 2 player in the future. I want to believe that judgment is off because the star ratings are pretty good in his favour. Of course, these two things, star rating and just the pros, they are kind of guidelines set by different staff members. You can't really take them as gospel. There's something that I like about Gannon. I just can't quite put my finger on it. He looks on the face of it like he should be a very good player. I think that's what it ultimately boils down to. So maybe something like this is what I currently consider the players to hold on to. Obviously, a lot of this hinges on who's actually available, who can we attract. Um, but we're in a good spot. We're in a very, very good spot, I feel like, going into League 2 now. It's not going to be easy. Um, of course, we've got some little upgrades on the way. We are going to have to upgrade our stadium going into League 2. Um, the requirements for that we definitely don't meet right now. That's going to be something that we have to solve. Of course, the junior coaching and youth recruitment we did improve throughout this year. We are attempting, I guess, to improve the training and youth facilities whenever we can, but 
that has stalled a little bit simply because we're not getting a whole lot of money pumped into the club. You do get different levels of tycoons or, um, as they're called in the game, sugar daddies. Um, you get background sugar daddies who invest when you're successful, foreground ones who will just continually pump money into the team till you're successful. That was the one that I thought we might have got with McKin based off the initial news inbox item where he said he would stop at nothing to see us win everything. The other type of tycoon you get is an underwriter who will essentially wipe off any debt the club acquires and pump in a little bit of money here and there as you're successful. We'll have to wait and see. For all I know, we could get invested with a million pounds over the summer. That is a possibility. And we'll probably need that, um, given the potential stadium improvements that are going to be needed. Anyway, one last thing I'll leave you with today is the little bit of news, and I mentioned it before, but I feel like we should go and look at her, is uh, the fact that Sandra is a scout here at Tower Fills my soul with joy to see our chair lady leave the club having been bought out by a tycoon and then come back and be a scout. That's a little unprecedented. Um, if you've got a similar experience to that, please let me know it down in the comments. But for me... I just found it quite interesting. You can see here she's retired from hands-on roles. She's had enough of running football clubs. She's now happy being w one of the worst scouts in the world. But we're okay with that. We love her for the her person that she is and the journey that she kick-started here at Tower Law. And that is good enough for me. But anyway, guys, that wraps up everything from me today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed episode number 50. It was a classic, crazy, crazy final. We made it through. League 2, here we come. Park to Prem. Nah, make it League 2 to the Prem, baby. See you next time.